speaking into microphones. I'm a health educator and personal trainer and fitness instructor for the city of Columbia. So my job is actually twofold. I actually get to help employees by, uh, by creating health and wellness programs. And then I also get to touch the community by working with them one-on-one -on -one at the ARC. Um, so I want to talk to you about public wellness, and I want to start with the letter S. The letter S, there are four letter S's that uh, plague me. They haunt me. They, they cause ill and, and, uh, and hurt my friends and my family and my community. Um, they are sugar, sedentary lifestyle, smoking, and stress. The number one en enemy is sugar, and so we're going to start there. Um, sugar is in everything today. And I don't know if you know the recommended daily allowance of how much sugar we are supposed to be taking in every day. Um, five teaspoons, which is 20 grams for women, about nine teaspoons, which is 36 grams for men, and about three teaspoons, which is 12 grams for children. Any ideas of how many we are actually taking in on a daily basis? 22 teaspoons or 88 grams. Where is it? It's in everything. You don't even realize that it's there unless you're reading labels. Um, the fact that spaghetti sauce has 11, over 11 grams is ridiculous. We've stripped nutrients from our um, foods, and, and foods are so highly processed now that we have to put sugar in them so that we, they taste good and so that we continue to eat them. Why do we care about sugar so much? Why do we care about the, the amount of sugar that we're taking in every day? In a word, diabetes. So what is diabetes? Diabetes is the high level of glucose in the blood. When you intake a carbohydrate... Your, your, your body breaks it down into glucose, which is a sugar, which fuels your body. Um, insulin is a hormone that delivers that glucose to your cells. So there are two types of diabetes. There's type 1 and type 2. Type 1 diabetes is uh, also referred to as juvenile diabetes, which is um, usually diagnosed in childhood. And that means that for some reason that body is, uh, is unable to produce insulin well or produce it at all. So they lose the ability to actually have their body generate the insulin and they have to become insulin dependent with insulin therapy. Type two, we create ourselves by, uh, you know, eating too much sugar and getting a little bit too big. So when you've got type one diabetes, the immune system is destroying, um, is destroying the, the insulin producing cells. Type two, you're getting overweight. Why do we care? As glucose levels rise, your blood vessels stiffen and they become more prone to injury. And so that's when things like kidney failure happens. And that's when things like heart attack and stroke happen. So we care about that. We want to get past that. Diabetes is the number one leading cause of death and preventable death. So there are 25 million Americans who have diabetes. There are 79 who are pre-diabetic, which means that they can develop diabetes. In Missouri, um, we have to worry about obesity and overweight which, and a sedentary lifestyle, which are the two leading risk factors of, of um, creating diabetes or getting diabetes. Um, in Missouri, the statistic is 65% of our residents are considered overweight or obese, and 50% of our teens are considered overweight or obese. Real statistics. So, um, about 19, the late 1990s, there was a program that was called the Diabetes Prevention Program. And they brought in people who were pre-diabetic and charged them with two tasks. Number one, they needed to take wherever their weight level was at that time and reduce it by 7%, just 7%. And the second task was to increase wherever their physical activity level was by 150 minutes a week. Five times, three, 30 minutes a week. We've heard those statistics. Um, the point of this is after three years, these participants of this study were able to prevent diabetes. The, the success level was 58% of the participants were able to keep from getting diabetes. So that says to us that diabetes is preventable. And how do we do that? Just by reduce, uh, reducing our weight and increasing, increasing our activity level. I talk really loud. <laughs> so that leads us into sedentary lifestyle. We need to worry about how much activity we are getting on a daily basis. So how many of us know someone who was very active in high school, very active in college, got their first job, and then they're sitting at a desk in a cubicle. And then they're not getting up from their desk to go and eat. And then sometimes they forget to eat, and so they go and grab a soda and something from the vending machine. And then they sit. And then they are tired because they've been there for the entire day. Um, or there's a breakfast meeting, and someone brings in donuts or bagels. 
And then there's a lunch meeting and we cater in something really healthy like pizza. And then there's someone's birthday and we get birthday cake at around three o'clock. So we get that nice big sugar high and then we just crash. And so we are sitting and sitting and we're not getting the activity that we need. So careerbuilder.com did a survey. 44% of the people that took this survey said that they are getting fatter at work. <laughs> then we've got the fact that Consumer Reports did a survey and a study, and they, they actually covered a lot of different research um, comparing where we are today to 1960, 50 years ago. 50 years ago, half of America's workforce were doing something that was at a moderate activity level, manufacturing, agriculture, um, and so construction. And so they were using their bodies. Today, only 20% of us are actually doing any type of a modern activity level in your day-to-day -day job. So every day, on average, you're burning 100 calories less each day. And that's just having to do with your job. Never mind the fact that in 1960, we didn't have dishwashers, we didn't have um, you know, microwaves. We, we um, had three television channels. We did not get sucked into the couch. Um, so we were actually doing a little bit more back then too. And kids, oh my gosh, there weren't computers or video games. You actually had to use your legs and run outside and play tag. And so you have these, these, these uh, morbidity rates that are, are just because of sitting. We're just, this is all us. We're all doing this. It's happening to everybody on a daily basis. All from sitting. Sitting is killing us. It's another S word, but it's not one of my S's. It's a sub S to sedentary lifestyle. <laughs> so then we've got sitting and some of us are still sitting and we're sitting and we're sitting, but we do get up. We do get up and we walk outside and we walk about 20 feet from the entrance. I think you know where I'm going with this. We are still smoking. I cannot believe that with all the research that we have, we are still smoking. 45.3 million Americans smoke. That is 19.3% of anyone 18 or up in the United States. And that is attributing to 443,000 deaths a year. One in every five deaths is to smoking. But here's the other thing about smoking. It's expensive. In the state of Missouri, a pack of cigarettes is $5.87. So if you smoke a pack a day, look at that. After a week, you've spent $41. After a month, you've spent $178. After a year, you've spent $2,000. $2,000. $2,000 is a 65-inch LED flat-screen TV with 3D capabilities. It is a four-day, three-night Disney Disneyland Resort vacation for four. It's a diamond ring for some of you. But more than that, it is actually uh, um, money that you can pay your bills, and you can reduce your debt. And in reducing your debt, you work on reducing your stress, which is one of our other S's. Stress, oh my gosh, Ugh. just the word itself actually evokes a physical response. Um, stress is uh, defined as the physical pressure, pull, or force exerted on one thing by another. Okay, we deal with it in another way. We have external stressors, your physical environment, your job, your relationships, your home, divorce, finances, school, um, and those external stresses are actually um, working with our internal factors, how we deal with the stress. And that is your nutritional status, your overall health, your fitness levels, your emotional well-being, and how much sleep and rest you're getting. So those factors work together. There's a lot of information out there. There's a lot of studies on how our body physically and physiologically responds to stress. Lots of neurotransmitters and hormones and all these things. But there's one hormone in specific that I want to talk about, and that is cortisol. Cortisol. Um, when you're under stress, cortisol is the, the adrenaline, is, you know, lets you have a nice big dose of this. Cortisol levels in itself, um, in themselves, actually fluctuate throughout the day. So your cortisol levels are higher in the morning and lower at night. Um, when you're under stress, you produce cortisol. Cortisol is a, a, a necessary. We need it. We use it to metabolize. Sorry, I keep doing. <laughs> we use it um, to. Um, properly metabolize glucose, um, it helps to regulate your blood pressure, it does lots of really, really good things. But when you're under constant stress and your body is continually creating this cortisol and the cortisol levels are rising and rising and rising, it can do bad things. 
It can affect your cognitive performance. It can affect your thyroid function. It decreases your bone density and your muscle tissue. It can higher your blood pressure. And it increases your abdominal fat. Now, the reason that I'm worried about this abdominal fat thing is not because it's unsightly, but because abdominal fat itself, as opposed to fat in other areas, is directly linked to heart attacks, strokes, higher levels of bad cholesterol, and lower bad, uh, levels of good cholesterol. Cortisol is also an appetite stimulant. So, and lucky for us, it also is specifically affecting your appetite for carbohydrates. So, then we go back to sugar, and we've made a full circle. So, here we go. How about some good S's? How about we be sensitive to what we're doing and what our friends and family are enduring? How about we support one another in trying to get a little bit further along in our, in our goals? How about we create a strategy on how to lose some weight, how to stop smoking, how to increase our activity level? Um, if we need solutions and help with our solutions, we can contact a professional and we can work together for success. I wanna challenge you to do four things. I want you to go brown. I want you to stop eating white bread, white rice, white sugar. White is nutritionally stripped. I want you to use your legs if you can. Walk the steps. Park far away from the door, not the closest side. Um, read food labels. There are two things that I tell every client that I work with, and if, they, if any clients were here, they would tell you the same thing. When you're reading your food labels, if you, one, cannot pronounce it, or two, cannot identify it in a store, you shouldn't be putting it in your face. And then stop drinking your calories. There is one food product on the market that is directly linked to obesity, and it is sugary drinks. Soda, fruit juices, those wonderfully sweet coffee drinks that have the word frap in them. Yeah, and sometimes the ones that don't. So if we can work together on all of these things, we can kind of get rid of our S's. Columbia can become an S-free community. I would love that. And then you know what? We can talk to our friends and families in other places and we can encourage them to try to get their communities to stop being an S-free community or to start being an S-free community. And then this wellness idea can spread. And I think wellness is a good idea. I think it's worth spreading. Thanks.